to Prezium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 1 of Entity Framework Tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what is Entity Framework. So, what is Entity Framework? Entity Framework is an ORM framework. ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping. So, what's Object Relational Mapping Framework then? Object Relational Mapping Framework automatically creates classes based on database tables and the vice versa is also true. That is, it can also automatically generate necessary SQL to create database tables based on classes. Let's understand what Entity Framework can provide with an example. Let's assume we have got these two tables. The first table is the Departments table, which has got ID, name and location columns. The second table is the Employees table, which has got ID, first name, last name, gender, salary and Department ID columns. Now this Department ID is the foreign key column, so we'll look up this value within the Departments table. Now let's say based on these two tables, we want to implement an ASP.NET web form that would display departments and employees data as you can see here. Notice that the first row is displaying IT department and its employees. The second and third rows, we have HR and payroll departments and their respective employees. Now, to implement an ASP.NET web form like this, what are the typical steps that are involved? We first need to create department and employee custom classes. And then we need to write ADO.NET code to retrieve data from the respective underlying database tables. Once we have the data retrieved, we then need to create instances of department and employee classes. And then we need to populate those instances with the data that we have retrieved. So these steps are kind of repetitive every time we add a new uh, table to our application. So every time we add a new table, we first need to create a custom class. So typically the name of the class will be the name of the table. And then the properties of the class will be the columns within that database table. And once we have that custom class created, we need to write ADO.NET code to go and fetch data to update in certain delete data. And then we need to create an instance of that custom class and then populate that object with the data that we have retrieved. Now, Entity Framework can do all of that for us automatically. Let's understand that with an example. So, first we need to install Entity Framework itself and the easiest way to install Entity Framework is by using NuGet Package Manager. So, let's actually flip to Visual Studio. So, at the moment what I have done is created a new ASP.NET MT Web Forms application and to install, you know, Entity Framework we first need to have NuGet Package Manager installed. To, if you don't have NuGet Package Manager installed, go to Tools and then go to Extension Manager and then search for NuGet and then you will have NuGet Package Manager within the list. Go ahead and install that and make sure you have Online Gallery selected when you are searching for NuGet Package Manager. Okay, so once you have NuGet Package Manager installed, then go ahead and click on Tools again, go to Library Package Manager, and then you should see Manage NuGet Packages for Solution option. So open this option, and then click on Online tab, and then search for Entity Framework. At the moment, I already have Entity Framework installed. Now, as of this recording, the latest version is 6.1. Okay, so I have this Entity Framework installed. So as soon as you install Entity Framework, what's going to happen? It's also going to add a reference to the Entity Framework assembly within the solution as you can see here. Okay, so Entity Framework is already installed on my machine. And uh, now we also need to create the two database tables, that is the departments and employees database tables. And in the interest of time, I have already implemented the SQL script. So here we are creating the departments table and this script will create the employees table and these two pieces of scripts here this is going to populate the departments table with some sample data and this script is going to populate the employees table with some sample data All right? and I have already executed the script so within our sample database I already have departments and employees tables so when I execute the query there we have the data from both of the tables now if we provide the Entity Framework with the schema, with this database schema, Entity Framework is automatically going to create the respective classes for us, that is the department and employee classes. It is also going to write the required ADO.NET code to retrieve data from the underlying database tables and then populate these objects with the data that is retrieved. Okay, let's actually look at that in action. So let's flip to Visual Studio. 
So the first step here is to add an ADO.NET entity data model. So let's right click on the project and add a new item and we want to add ADO.NET Entity Data Model. Um, the easiest way to find the template is to select Data tab here and then select ADO.NET Entity Data Model and let's call our model Employee Model and then click Add. So we want to generate you know, uh, our entities from the database. So select that option and then click Next and then you know, here it's asking you, you know, to specify a connection now click on the new connection button if you don't already see a connection and then specify the name of the server. In my case, SQL Server is running on this local machine. So I'm going to use dot. Okay. And then I'm going to use Windows authentication. And the database in our case is sample. So I'm going to select that database and we can test the connection. So test connection succeeded. Click OK. So once you have that, so uh, it's asking us, uh, you know, to save the connection settings in the web.config file. Now here, you can give it any name, okay? Now I'm going to call this employee DB context, okay? And there is a specific reason why I'm naming it like that, employee DB context. But we'll discuss that um, maybe in a later video session. But for now, you know, I've just changed it to employee DB context. And what's going to happen when I click next, you know, whatever server information um, that we have specified, you know, it's going to save that connection string with that name within the web.config file. And behind the scenes, it's also going to generate another class called employee DB context. We'll discuss that in detail in a later video session. For now, let's um, just understand that with this name, there will be a connection string within the web.config file. So let's click next now. Now it's going to connect to the database um, and then it's going to retrieve the tables, views and stored procedures. And then we need to select the two tables based on which we want to generate entities. In our case, they are departments and employees. And then let's change the model namespace to employee model. Now look at this two checkboxes here, pluralize or singular, uh, singularize generated object names, include foreign key columns in the model. So obviously these are self-explanatory. Now look at this, the table names are departments and employees, uh, you know, basically because, you know, a department's table will contain several departments. So it makes sense to have the name as departments. Similarly, employees table will have several employees. But then when you look at a department class, it's going to contain just one department. So it's going to singularize the entity name, the class name that it's going to generate. Okay, so very good option. And then it's also going to include foreign key columns in the model. Okay, um, so leave those two default options there and then click finish. So now this is going to generate the entity model for us automatically. Okay, so notice that it has added this file employee model and then we have department and employee classes. Okay, and look at the properties ID, name, location. These correspond to the columns within the underlying database table and notice that we have navigation properties here. So a department can contain multiple employees. So we have employees property there. So when we use this property, we are going to get all the employees belonging to that department. And similarly, an employee belong to a specific department. Okay, so there is a department navigation property along with, you know, all the other properties. So basically, this will correspond to the columns in the underlying database table. Okay, so a department can have many uh, employees. So one to many relationship there. All right, and if you look at this employee model dot designer dot CS file, you should actually have the entities that I am talking about. So basically, notice that we have department entity, and then you should also have the properties. So we have the ID property, we have the name property, and you should see other properties as well. Similarly, we should also have employee entity, and then their respective properties. So here we have the employee property um, class and the respective properties of the employee class. Now, um, let's go ahead and add a web form to our project. So at this 
point we have everything you know we have the employee class created departments class created um, the respective properties are there it has also written the required ADO.NET code to retrieve data from the underlying database tables and then populate these objects with the required data now let's go ahead and add a web form and let's call it webform1.aspx and first of all here let's set um, the style attribute and let's set font family to Arial. And let's drag and drop a grid view control. So grid view control should be under the data tab. And then let's also drag and drop entity data source control. Okay, so let's flip to the design mode. So we have the grid view control and entity data source controls. Um, let's con auto format this grid view control. Let's actually choose this colorful scheme to make it look a little nice. And then let's configure the entity data source. So configure the data source. So named connection. Now, if I go ahead and drop this down, look at this employee DB context. Now, if you recollect, this is the name that we have used uh, for the connection string that is stored in the web.config file. Now, when I select this, look at this, it says, um, you know, unable to load the specified metadata resource. That's basically because we have not compiled our solution yet. So let's go ahead and compile this solution. Now, let's go ahead and configure the data source. So let's select this employee DB context, click next. And then what is the entity set that we want? We are going to select departments for now. Remember, this is how we want the data to be displayed. So we want the department ID, name, location, and then the employees that belong to that department. So here, I'm going to select departments, which is going to have ID, name, location. And if you recollect you know, the employee data model, Keep in mind, it also had a navigation property called employees. Okay, so we will be able to get employees belonging to this department as well. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that in just a bit. So we want to select all these properties of that uh, uh, department's entity and then click finish. So we have our entity data source configured. Now let's associate this entity data source with this grid view control. And to do that, I'm going to select this entity data source there. So we have ID name and location. Now we also want to display employees belonging to each department. So what I'm going to do here is actually edit columns and then I'm going to add another column. Let's actually add a template field. Now if you're new uh, to grid view control, we have a video series explaining uh, extensively about the grid view control and how to use various fields that we have. So please watch the videos from grid view video series. Okay, so let's add template field and then let's specify the heading for template fields as, uh, for this template field as employees. Let's go ahead and click OK. And now we want to edit the templates of this template field. So I'm going to click edit templates and then I'm going to drag and drop another grid view control within the item template of that template field that we have just added. Okay, because that's what is the grid view control that we are going to use to display employees details. So let's go ahead, drag and drop another grid view control here. And then we need to edit data bindings for this grid view control. So what do we want to display within this grid view control? The employees information. So I'm going to click on the smart tags, uh, smart tasks button and then select edit data bindings. And I'm going to choose this custom binding. And then we are going to use this eval method. So we want to display employees details. And keep in mind, there is a navigation property called employees on the department object. OK, so it's going to pull the employees and then display within this grid view control. So let's click OK. And let's go back to the main grid view control and then end template editing. Okay, with all those changes, let's go ahead and run our web form. So now we expect it to display department ID, name, location, and the respective employees. Let's see if that's what we get. Okay, now look at this, we got ID, name, location, but we didn't get employees details. 
Why is that? That's basically because we need to do one more little thing here. So if we go to the entity data source, and if we get to the properties of that entity data source. Now, by default, what is this entity data source going to do? Um, it's going to retrieve only the department details. It's not going to load the employee's details. So we want to tell it to load the employee's details as well. So there is this property called include, where we can specify uh, you know the employees navigation property so this is going to load employees details as well so with that change let's save it let's go ahead and run it once more and notice that we have department ID name location and the employees but what is our requirement we don't want to display uh, you know the employee ID and department ID columns if that's the case what we need to do is we need to configure uh, the grid view control within the template field. So basically, go to edit templates and within the template field we have the grid view control. So let's go to edit columns. Now it's automatically generating columns for us. Now we don't want that to happen. We want to control what columns we want to display. We only want to display first name, last name, gender and salary columns. So what we're going to do here is add you know, bound columns. So this bound column here the header text is going to be first name and the data field is going to be first name. Let's add another head, um, bound column, header text, last name. The data field is going to be last name. Let's quickly do that. Let's add another bound field. Header text is going to be gender. Data field is also going to be gender and then let's add another bound fill finally we want to add salary so salary is the header text and data field is salary so let's click OK and look at this it's also automatically generating the columns we don't want that to happen so get to the properties of the grid view control and then there should be a property called auto generate columns and which is on by default let's turn it off so that should get rid of that. Let's end template editing. Let's go ahead and run this. Now we only get the columns that we expect. Okay. All right. So you first need to install the NuGet package manager. And then once you have NuGet package manager installed, using NuGet package manager, install entity framework. And once you have installed Entity Framework, add um, ADO.NET Entity Data Model. And we have seen that in action. All right. So in this video, we have used the schema first approach of the Entity Framework. But with Entity Framework, we can also use model first or code first approaches. We'll discuss those in our subsequent videos. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.